everyone, Joe here. So, take a look outside. Yeah, I'm not going to be dragging out my brewing equipment uh, into that. So, we're going to be doing an Irish stout here, extract style. It's actually a Christmas present. Thank you very much. Um, and to get started, of course, we've got our beer. Today, I'm having actually a uh, Magic Hat Howl, Black as Night Lager. This one is awesome. I highly recommend it if you can still find it. So, what we're going to be doing today is one of the Brewers Co-op um, All Malt Stout Kits. Here are the ingredients. You've got, uh, similarly to the other kit we brewed, uh, it's the same, it's the Two Brothers uh, Homebrew Store, which is, uh, we always go there, they got great stuff. Um, we've got 6.6 .6 pounds of light malt extract. This is the Brees Pilsen Light. We've got here for our special, well, our little muslin bag and the mutton's yeast like regular. We've got a third pound of roasted barley, a third pound of black patent malt, and a third pound of um, unmalted, oh wait, U.S. crystal malt. There we go. Sorry, I got off my list here. <laughs> and then we've got here an ounce of Chinook hops for our bittering and an ounce of Willamette hops for the finishing. Um, so without further ado, let's get to brewing this. Alrighty, so let's do this. We're going to first put in our crystal malt. The way that these bags are, um, rather than typically, I, I'll just chop the top and dump them all in, but because these are all separate grains, I'm instead just going to pour each bag in rather than uh, try to do a, a top dump of all of them. <laughs> so um, if you haven't seen in my previous videos, I'll try to always put a piece of paper under here. This is the recipe actually, and uh, that'll just catch all this dust and then we can just toss it. Um, so let's take our, um, well let's see, this is our unmalted roasted barley. This bag is going to be stuffed to the hilt, good lord. And we've got our third of um, the black malt here. If you can't guess, this is what's going to give the finished beer all of its color. Um, the malt extracts we're using here are not the dark malt extracts, it is the pills and light. So that's not going to give you any color except a, a very, very pale yellow. Okay, let's see if I can tie this thing. <laughs> I like to try to tie it as close to the top as possible, just so that way you get the maximum water to green ratio, but the bag is so damn full. Okay, there we go. See what I mean? Catching all that. So, now what we're going to do, dump this in our water and get the water uh, heating up. Here's our grain bag going in there. And now we're going to put the, uh, the water on. We've got uh, just over two gallons of water in this pot. Per the instructions. And... Um, the way that the, the, the Brewers Co-op kits recommend is to dump your grains in, uh, and then as the water heats up, you just take them out right before it starts to boil. Um, so given that there's so many grains in here, I'm going to poke this bag, get it, get it wet. You can already see, look at all that delicious darkness. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Well, we're just going to let that sit. And we'll pull that grain uh, out once it's uh, up to a boil. And while that water is getting up to temperature, I have went ahead and put the two um, canisters of the malt extract into some nice hot water there to get that extract softening up. Okay, the water just started to bubble, so we're going to get these out of here. can see it is uh, boiling there. So I'm actually going to kill the heat on this. It's bubbling though. Uh, my uh, thermometer here is only saying about 210. So we'll get this out of here too. 
Um, and this is a perfect time to talk about this. I'm actually planning on just using one can of the malt extract for right now. Um, the logic being that last one we made, essentially it didn't uh, ferment as far down as I thought it was going to be, and I believe it's because I caramelized um, some of those sugars that were in the two cans. So we're going to put one can in now, um, or one, you know, one of the, the plastic containers of malt extract, get that mixed in, get that to a boil, and do all of our hops in that one, um, that one 3.3 pound malt extract. And then towards the end, probably the last 10 minutes or so, I'll add the rest of the malt extract and also our, the priming sugar because I have no need for it. So we'll go ahead and just put it in too. Um, but, and then that should help eliminate uh, the caramelization of those uh, sugars, uh, which obviously I'd, I don't want. I'd like it to be a more of a dry stout. Um, yeah, so we're just going to let this drain for another minute or two and then move this off of the burner and mix in the liquid malt extract. Just one can of it. Okay, let's get this uh, mixed in. And uh, just in case this is the first video you've seen of making a beer with a, a liquid malt extract, you always want to remove it from the burner you're using uh, because this stuff is heavier than water, so it sinks right down to the bottom of your brew kettle. And you don't want it to scorch because that will, will ruin your whole batch. get as much of that extract off there as we can. That's not too bad. A little bit left here at the top. We'll just scrape that out. Perfect. Yeah, see? It's not too bad. I'm not sure it isn't there. <laughs> There's a little bit left in there, but Okay, it looks like it's pretty well mixed in. I'm scraping the bottom, just checking the spoon to see if any is coming up, and there's not, so I believe we're good. We're going to head and move this back onto the burner and get it up to a boil and uh, add our bittering hops, the Chinook. Okay, we are at our boil here, and you can see I'm having a little bit of issues with the foam, which is why you always have your spritzer bottle. Okay, so we've got our ounce of Chinook hops here. We're almost ready to add them here. I'm just a little bit nervous about all that foam, but you know what, let's just go ahead for it. So here we go. An ounce of Chinook. Those are for the bittering. So now we're going to go ahead and set our timer for an hour. Oh, the hops actually look to have helped the foam a bit. Groovy, I'll take it. I'm still armed and ready though. <laughs> I 
Okay, so with five minutes left, we are going to add our ounce of Willamette hops. Um, I think at about 10 till, I'm going to add the other canister of the malt extract, as well as the priming sugar here. I've got, might as well toss it in. So we will see you in about 50 minutes. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes to go, so we're going to kill the heat on this bad boy and move it over and get the rest of that malt extract added. Woo, look at those red coils. Damn. Freaking foil lids. I just dunked the whole thing, but the, it's paper. extract everywhere. I can feel it sticking to the bottom a bit, so we're trying to really get that scraped off there. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to the uh, malt extract canister here, give it a shake, and add it in. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. Spotless. Had to rinse my hands off there. Okay. So I'm going to just mix this for a minute or two here. And then we're going to add it back to the uh, burner. Get it boiling again for another 10 minutes. And after five of that, we're going to add our finishing hops. Okay, it's just getting back to a boil now, so I'm going to go ahead and add the corn sugar they sent with, because again, I don't need it, might as well just toss it in. Done and done. Give that a good mix. Again, I added everything so late this time just to see if, um, just to see if that impacted the uh, fermentability of the wort. All right, that's looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer now for 10 minutes. Ooh, let there be foam. Look how much that puffs up, isn't that crazy? If uh, this is the first time uh, you've watched a, a beer get made, you never ever leave your pot, man, because this stuff can boil over faster than 
faster than she, I mean, like, look how tall that is already. I mean, that's crazy. It's like watching a marshmallow in a microwave. <laughs> So we got about five more minutes and then we are going to add uh, the final addition of hops, which are the ounce of Willamette, and that is for aroma. Um, yeah, pretty much for aroma. And so with five minutes left, we are going to go ahead and add our Willamette hops an ounce there. Armed and ready with this bad boy, just in case they decide to flare up. And I'm going to uh, completely avoid using Irish Moss or a Whirl Flock tablet um, for this boil. And the main reason is, given that it's going to be a nice dark stout, you're not going to really be able to tell if there's haze in there. And uh, I honestly don't care. <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to just skip that step entirely. You can add it if you want it. Oh, I missed a tiny pellet. See? Don't want to miss that little guy. Boop. Um, yeah, I, I just don't feel with a stout you really need to worry too much about that whole clarity thing because the whole point of a stout is to not be able to see through it. So if you can see through it, you've done it wrong. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let this boil for five more minutes. All right, we're nearing the end. There it is. Okay, we're going to kill the heat on this bad boy. Take our lid, pop it on there, and pull it off the heat. Because uh, if you leave the lid on, uh, your brew kettle, it's going to foam and it's going to blow up. So, now what we're going to do, we're going to head to the sink. So here we are at the sink. We're going to go ahead and put a stopper in there. And bring over our pot. And essentially fill this up with cold water, and let it heat up, drain it, and redo that a couple times. This is going to save you a ton of uh, ice, actually, uh, if you're using ice for, uh, you know, for your cooling. Essentially, you're going to shock it down as low as your uh, tap water can go, which I'm in Illinois, and it is January, so it's ice cold. Um, I don't even know if I'll need ice, to be completely honest. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to fill this... Uh, sink up with cold water. So we're going to let that sit for a few, drain it, rinse, dry, repeat, probably five or six times, and then we will get to the ice bath. Okay, we're just about to start actually adding the ice to the water here, but uh, now's a good time to go ahead and get everything else you need uh, sanitized, sanitizing. So we're going to be using uh, the last bit of star sand I have here for my tools, and then we're going to be using some iodophor in the actual fermenter over there. So we'll just go ahead and get some warm water into here. I also need to still sanitize my um, my water hose here. You want to make sure everything that touches your beer um, is sanitized. So. And again, star sand, you use warm water. Iodophore, you use cold. Delightful. We'll just let this set now. Okay. 
about a gallon of water there. Gotta just wait for the hose here. There we go. Alright, I'll measure out some uh, IO4 here. I can never remember this one. One ounce to five gallons. Also need to um, sanitize uh, the again the water hose I've got here. Just gotta pop it off the tap. Because this is uh, the hose I use to add my top off water. So it's important that this gets sanitized as well. And I am careful to make sure that, that the metal doesn't scratch the side of the fermenter. You don't want that. And as well, the good old trusty strainer. We'll get that in there on this side and then I'll sanitize. Uh, I'll give it a shake here again. And we will be good to go. Set that on there for now. part about brewing your own beer is that you can clear out your own little old ice you don't need. It's a good feeling. Get rid of that stinky ass crap. <laughs> so if you set your pot down on ice like I just did, make sure you hold on to it because it's going to slip and slide around when the air pops out from underneath the thing. Um, as well as ice is slippery. Oops. There we go. Now we're just going to let that sit and melt and uh, give everything a stir. We've got our spoon in the sanitizer so we can just give it a stir. Don't have to worry about any microbes or anything. You can see, looking beautiful. It smells awesome. Um, and yeah, it's just now a matter of getting this down to uh, temperature, then we'll transfer it into our bucket. Okay, our wort is now sitting at about 65 degrees, so I gotta get the uh, yeast here. Rehydrating. Add that in there. We'll let that sit. I've got my spoon here, which is sanitized. This is sanitized, everything was clean. I've got it wrapped in some plastic. I'm gonna put some plastic over the top of the Pyrex mug here. Never keep any creepy crawlies out. So now we're going to transfer some wort. Let's do this. Woo! Okay, so I got that. Again, everything is sanitized, which is what you need to do. Okay. Pull this out of our ice water. There's still plenty of. Uh, ice in there, like I said, you uh, you really, really help it out by cooling this down with water first, so let's do this. the strainer here to catch all that hot uh, sediment. You don't need all that stuff. Slip that in there for the time being. And now we just got to work uh, this through here. You know what? I'm actually going to grab my spoon 
because it's so thick. And the spoon again is sanitized. Just kind of peel away sections of the uh, that hop residue. You can see it's flowing now. But just got to move, uh, scrape that all the hop sludge up away so the liquid has somewhere to go. <laughs> Yummy hot gooey sludge goodness. You can see how thick that is. Again I'm just sort of moving it out of the way letting the uh, work drain off that crap. Look at that. It's like oh mmm gruel. Okay, we got it sitting at 70 degrees spot on. I'm gonna take it so whoop, there we go. Rinse all of that off. Got a little bit of hot goo there. That's okay. Yummy, yummy. We filled that up to about five and a half gallons or so. I uh, will typically put in a little bit more than is needed uh, just to help combat the loss for the true. Plus taking it up just a, a notch or so gives the uh, gives the perfect amount for my cake. So okay, let's check the temperature on this. Sanitized. And everything, everything, everything needs to be sanitized. Oop, I'm stuck on the leg of the. There we go. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, but look at that. 68 degrees. Who's the man? I the man. This is perfect. Yep, I'm continuing to mix. 68 degrees. Ignore this over here. That's what it's uh, set to beep at. So 217, it's not going to beep at anything. <laughs> at least for brewing anyway. So 68 degrees. I'm a happy camper. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, hydrometer reading. Let's see where we where we sit. Again, everything is sanitized. This has been sitting in star sand. It's a little low. I'm going to pull it up. Whoops, that's a bit too much. It's a glorious part about the hydrometer. You can always just Tap the end and away it goes. Give it a spin. Four, two, four, six, eight. Four, eight. I do believe we're spot on. Grabbing the recipe here just to see what they say. They say the starting gravity is supposed to be at 1.042 to 1.046. And this is actually sitting at 1.048. Let me just double check here. 2468. Yep. I'll take it.
And if this is your first time brewing, feel free to take taste tests all along the way. There's no reason not to. Okay. Uh, see, it's this is going to be a... I think this thing's going to blow up. Look at that foam. It's awesome. But you can see beautiful dark color. This sucker is ready to go. Okay. So, I've now got my yeast here. We're going to take the sanitized spoon. And a very light mix. it off in there. Might as well. It's all going down now. Here we go. Yummy. I'm actually going to ladle some wort into here. Might as well get all that yeast out of there. I've never had a problem with the yeast they provided with this. That's the Muntins, uh, the six gram packet. I believe it's just the standard. Yeah, their standard six gram packet. Never had a problem with that stuff, so I'm, I'm feeling confident about this. Uh, I do always have extras on hand though, just in case. You should always have some extra, extra yeast on hand. I'm gonna give it a little mix, since this is already in here. we go. Okay, so now what we do, we take our lid. Where's the thermometer? On this side. So I always put them on the same side. Again, it's just easier for me. A snap, snap, snap. Okay, let's see. Got my airlock here with Star Saiyan already in it. Just put that in like so, like so. Just tidying up here. Ah, uh, there we go. So we're gonna now take this. We're gonna get it into the fermentation box, which is that gigantic pink uh, foam thing you've seen in some of my other videos. If you are a uh, follower of the channel, um, if not, please do subscribe. I'd love to. Uh, Love to have you along for the journey. I do lots of brewing videos. We've got cooking, got tips and tricks and for all kinds of stuff, uh, mostly brewing related. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this. And we will see you guys here in um, probably in about 24 hours. That's when this should be bubbling away. I am actually a little bit nervous given the amount of foam this sucker made uh, with the potential of a blowout. So if it's blowing out, you're going to see it here in just a moment. And if not, we will see you in uh, several weeks when it comes time to cake this bad boy up and give it a taste. So thanks as always for watching. Please do rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about it. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers, 17.